Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. As the title says above, this is going to be the Q&A video that I did with my bishop. I'm making this intro video because we had so much trouble trying to record this video, you guys. It literally took us about seven to six hours just to record the video and the footage you're gonna see we actually did on Facebook because that was just the easiest way for us to record um, I am gonna be splitting up the footage into probably either three or four different videos because it is so long it's about four hours of footage but um, I hope you guys enjoy this I will leave a link down below to my church's Facebook page as well as my bishop's Facebook page because he is also a musician um, and yeah, I just hope you guys get something out of this, and I definitely plan to do more videos with my leaders from my church, and my church as a whole, I absolutely enjoyed doing this video. It is currently raining, hope you guys cannot hear the rain and the thunder, so let's just get into this video. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Can, you can't hear me now? They saying they can't hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Let me share it on my page and see. Can everybody hear me out there? Okay. They said they can hear me. Okay. <laughs> Today, I'm doing a video with my daughter, Shanae. Hi. <laughs> How y'all doing out there? So she's going to be asking me some questions. Of course, you know. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So we get, we in there. She's going to ask yeah. me some serious questions, y'all, so y'all better be ready. I yes, hope y'all got some answers questions. out there. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yep. All right. Let's do it. So the first question is, what are some ways to make your walk with God stronger? What are some ways to make your walk with God stronger? Can y'all can y'all hear um Shanae? Yes. Uh, well, you know, one of the things that I would say, you know, first of all, is knowing where you are in Christ. You know, understanding that if you don't know where you are in Christ, then chances are you'll be a bliss to where you're going. And um, I think it's important that every person should have a prayer life um, that keeps you in contact with God and keeps you sensitive to the things that God wants you to hear. Um, the Bible lets us know that um, that we are not to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge God. I think the first thing that we must learn to do is to acknowledge God. Uh, most people fail to acknowledge God, and so they um, find themselves um, in difficult places not knowing where to turn. Um, and most of us, we have a problem with turning to our friends before we turn to God. Um, I believe God should be the first source of information and should be the, uh, the first place that we go when it comes to, um, you know, our relationship with God and making it stronger. Um, every now and then, I think you should you should uh, actually um, do a fast, a personal fast. The church shouldn't have to go on a fast in order for you to fast. I believe that we should do our own personal fast because it puts, it gives us a sense of um, bringing our flesh under subjection. 
um, as a believer, as a Christian, your flesh is going to constantly be warring against what you used to do and how you used to be and what you're used to doing. And so if you don't train your flesh or retrain your flesh um, on how to um, to adjust to the new life, which is living in the spiritual realm or living in the spirit, by the spirit, um, then you find yourself um, having a very difficult time um, in this walk. I see your um, your thing, your, um, <laughs> your picture is frozen, but uh, <laughs> I'm still moving, girl, I'm still oh. moving. Is it, is it frozen because of the uh, internet? Let me see if I can. I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, I believe that. Um, she got cut off, y'all, but we're gonna she's gonna come back on. You know, but everybody should be really conscious of your relationship with God. Um, your relationship with God should be the, I'm just telling you, it should be the strongest relationship you have. Um, the unfortunate thing is that many of us don't have good relationships with others in, this, in the natural. And we translate that um, negative relationship in the spiritual realm and so i encourage you to have a group or have a a relationship with god that trains you to have a great relationship with others and don't have don't allow the relationship that you have with others to train you how you deal with god i know i just said a whole lot right there but um <sighs> Sometimes these things are hard. Let me see if I could get her back in here. Hey, what up, man? KC, love you, boss. You back? Yeah. <laughs> I said a whole lot. I'm watching it and I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I said that I think I need to repeat is that we can't deal with God the way we deal with our friends, but rather we should look to God to teach us how to deal with our friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Good. And how to have yeah. a relationship with our friends. All right, Sister Jenkins. <laughs> Love you, dear. Sister Jenkins is on the line. They all there. <laughs> all right, Montre. Love you, Vanjie. <laughs> All right, let's go. Give me another question. Can y'all right. see her now? Can you guys hear me and see me? Hey, Isaiah. Hey, Joshua. Hey, Bridget, you how you doing? Show? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Sister Lore, <laughs> what's up, son? Shamel, Sister Leticia, what's up, son? I right, see they all coming online, so we're here now. You gotta give me some, gotta give me something to say. <laughs> okay, okay, Nicole, awesome, awesome. Glad you was able to come over. Okay, so the second question is, how do you deal with anger as a Christian? Whoa. How do you deal with <laughs> anger as a Christian? Well, I mean, first of all, I believe that anger is something, is a learned behavior. We get angry and how we, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Okay. So there's is nothing wrong with being angry, but it's how you deal with that anger how you respond when a person 
rubs you the wrong way or does something to you that may, um, you know, send you, you know, they cross that line. The reality is, is that um, when you get angry, you have to think about it. Is your response that you're going to give going to be a response of love or is it going to be a response of more anger that's going to attract more anger because whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. You know, a lot of people, they, they say, well, I didn't really mean to smack her. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is, <laughs> the truth is, yeah. is that you thought about it before you did it. The reality is, is that you just didn't respond. You didn't allow the spirit of God to control your response. And many people um, allow their emotions to overtake them to where they can't, they, they, they lose control of their spiritual senses. You know, we, had a, we got a saying that, you know, you don't want me to put my religion on the shelf. But yeah, that's the problem because you putting your religion on the shelf. But if you had a relationship with God, then you would honor that relationship and, and showing some integrity in how you respond. Oh, boy. I, I, I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place. <laughs> so anger is, is, is something that we all encounter, but how we deal with it is two different things. I mean, I've been angry many a times. As many times I wanted to knock some folk out. But the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, on the inside of me is what keeps me from really going that. And it's not just the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. It's my love for Christ that I will not dishonor him when it comes to others. The Bible says that how can we love him and not love those who we are here with every day and that we confront every day? You know, you got to... Love should be your first um, purpose of response. It should be the first thing that you're thinking. Okay, am I going? Am I? Is my response going to bring forth love, or is it going to bring forth more um, anger? You know, you got to decide, and, and you got to decide very quickly because you know when anger comes, it don't have no friends and it don't have no faces. It just comes, and whatever is next that really that's ready to come out of your mouth, you most of the time we have a tendency of just doing whatever comes next. And um, the reality is, uh, <laughs> I, I'm helping you right now, girl. Let the Lord fight your battles. Yeah, let all right, let me give you a little testimony how how anger can be very dangerous if you don't control it by the Holy Spirit. I give you give you a, a little short testimony. I was on the train with my kids one day, and while I was on the train, this young man came and 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 um basically hit me and 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 bumped into me to sit in the chair next to me. And my first response was, I'm getting ready to knock this dude out. <laughs> right? But I thought about it and I realized that my son was sitting next to me. Uh, my wife was sitting next to me and my daughter was sitting next to me. And I thought about it and I said, suppose I do go to, to hit this guy. Um, I'm not carrying a gun. I'm not carrying a knife. I'm, I'm here with Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? If I go to hit him, I step out of the realm of the favor in which I've been given. And then I start operating in the flesh. When I start operating in the flesh, I'm now operating in the realm that the enemy wants to bring me into. So I'm no longer covered. And no longer are my children and my wife covered. So what I did is I said, okay, God, I see that this is a spirit that is trying to bring me out of my realm of favor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here and pray. And I just began to pray, and I thought about it because my flesh was saying, give him one good whack, because he, he not only hit me, but he said, yeah, what? What do you want to do in front of my family? So anger was about to take over, but wisdom had to step in. So now my wife is still here. I'm still here. 
my children are still here. When we hear every day, there are so many different incidents that are happening with with children and wives and, and people getting stabbed, just like the young kid that just got stabbed in school um, just the other day, okay? Anger has a way of trying to pull you out of your realm of favor. I'm going to say that again. Anger will pull you out of your realm of favor. Don't let it happen. Whew. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Don't let me start preaching now. I'm, I'm going to talk, y'all. I'm going to talk. I'm going to I'm, I'm sure my yeah, don't let really anger it. pull you out of your realm of favor. Because the enemy, that's what he wants to do. He wants to pull you out of that realm, that 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 realm of protection, that 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 fence of protection that the angels are around you. When you step back and you let God do what he do, he does it well. And guess what? Not only that, but your children will respect you. Your wife will respect you even the more because they realize you put them before yourself. Whew. Jesus. Good God, I feel <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Come on, girl. Come with the next one. All right. So the next question is, how do you find your purpose? How do you find your purpose? Mm. Well, I put it to you this way. The Bible says that all it says it says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose, right? So in order to find the purpose that you're supposed to be considering your purpose is you have to get into God because his purpose should be the ultimate purpose that you live for. And the reality is, is that the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind is that? The mind to do the will of God, not the mind to, oh, I want to be a, 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 a big time performer, or I want to be a big time this, and I want to be a big time that. No, your, your mindset should be set on, Lord, tell me what is your will for my life. When you seek God, he will give you the, the, the purpose that you are here for. He will give you the exact reason why he placed you here on earth. The problem is, is that most people have um, created their own purposes. And, they, and, and most of them derive from either their parents, um, people who they have become... Uh, people who had become and made idols. This is why, you know, even in this day and time, people are, they, they have idols. And we don't realize that we're using and having other people as idols. Um, we allow people, we see people doing things and we go, oh yeah, I want to do that. But is that what God intended for you to do? Or are you just doing that because you saw, or you were inspired by somebody else to do something? You know, I, I used to think that I was purposed, right? My purpose was to do music. I had to find out that but was that was my gift. And that gift was purposed to um to um to support the main purpose in my life. It was never designed to be my focus on purpose because we are not here to stay. Nobody's here to stay. We're all going to have to answer to all of the things that we do in this body concerning the kingdom of God. We are here in this world to serve Christ. We are here in this world to make sure that the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ gets out to the world and that those people who you come in contact with will now learn about Jesus Christ based on you pursuing the purpose of spreading the word of God. All of our purpose is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are a believer, there is no other purpose. This is why it, it, it baffles me sometimes when people say, well, I don't, I don't really know what my purpose is. Well, there's a difference between knowing what you're gifted to do, 
or what your giftings are versus what your purpose are because your gift was only designed to enhance your purpose to give your purpose a vehicle my music is it's not that there's no purpose in my music yes my music was based to be a a, a, a a carriage to carry my music in places where i carry the word of god in places where i can't get to you know and that's he's given me the gift of um writing songs and lyrics and to reaching people through music and melodies and harmonies and all that good stuff but my purpose is to deliver the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reason why most people are walking around feeling purposeless is because they choose not to witness. When you don't witness, you are not fulfilling your purpose. Your whole purpose is to be a witness of God, a witness of Jesus Christ. That's why we got the Holy Ghost. He sent us the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, he said we'll be witnesses throughout all of the world, okay? If you do not witness, then you become purposeless and you feel purposeless. And this is the reason why a lot of people are walking around feeling like they don't, you know, they don't have any place in this world. Well, truth be told, we should not be wanting a place in this world. It's okay to pursue dreams and aspirations, but when it comes to what is my purpose, I realize, that my music is, is not my purpose, it's my gift. It is a gift that is given to me so that my purpose can be fulfilled and be able to be manifested here on earth as it has already been manifested in heaven. Mm. <laughs> yeah, my purpose is to please the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might know what is the good pleasure and the good will of the Lord. If you do not present your body and present yourself um, unto God and, and allow God to be your focus and your purpose, then what happens is that you find yourself um, walking around feeling purposeless. You know, I didn't feel, you know, I thought that my purpose was my music, but I had to find out, you know, and it happened a little later in my life, but you could, you can find that out right now because I'm telling you. So you don't have to go uh, another five years trying to figure stuff out. You know, you should know even now as I'm speaking that if you have not made the gospel of Jesus Christ and the spreading of his word, your purpose, then you will always feel purposeless. Now, what if you're an unbeliever or you don't know Christ? Then how would you answer that? Well, my, my, my answer to that was, but get to know him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole, the whole thing is, I mean, you know, a person that doesn't know Christ, you know, of, of course, they're going to feel purposeless because of the mere fact that um, we were never designed to come to this world to um, pursue um, our own personal goals. You know, the Bible lets us know that even Jeremiah, he under we, we understand that Jeremiah was told that he was known in the womb before he was in the womb of the mother, which lets me know that God knew us before we came here. So there, there is a relationship that is already formulated in heaven with us, our souls. Uh, our souls have already been, have already encountered a relationship with God. So now, you know, this is good because I, I, I wrote a song called Save Me. And in that song, 
the whole purpose is that the soul of man is constantly crying to be back with the Savior. Every day you walk, your soul is constantly desiring to be back with your father, back with your with your your heavenly father, back with the with the place in the relationship with God that you with that was originally started up in heaven. Amen. So for unbelievers, I would say, you know, today is your day to receive Christ in your life. You know, today is the day that don't let this hour go by without saying, you know what? I want to experience God and I want to experience his love in a way that I've never experienced it before. See, because the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? He gave his son for the love of the world. Watch this. His son was given for the love of the world. But eternal life is given by believing that he sent the son. Two different things. Because you can't, you can't have eternal life just receiving his love. But you got to believe that he sent his son for eternal life. Now, you can receive his love. Everybody's receiving his love. Because mm -hmm. the truth be told, many things that have taken place and people who have done crazy things, and, and they should have been cut off by now. But because of the mercy of God and the grace of God, he hasn't cut us off. But it's when you, re when you say, you know what? I believe that God sent his son to die for my sins. I, that God sent his son to die for me. That is when you now inherit eternal life. Amen. Amen.